Have you ever thought that your home could be making you sick? When buying a home, do you know the signs and signals to look for? Things like mold or other concerning toxins that could be present lurking behind the walls? Do you know how to test for them? In today's interview, you're going to learn all this and more. This episode is perfect for someone buying a home, but is also great for evaluating your current home. This is all thanks to our special guest, holistic realtor, Heather Rose. Heather is a holistically minded realtor in the greater Nashville area. She passionately loves to help clients navigate a healthy home purchase. She spent countless hours researching and connecting with leading industry professionals, all so she can help educate her clients on the concerning dangers that can potentially lurk in a home. She has a wealth of knowledge, and I told her she needs her own TV show. Let's kick this off and get a pen and paper handy so you can write down your hubby's new to-do list like I did. Hey, it's Autumn McLees, your birth doula and crunchy mama source for choosing healthier alternative ways of living. Because when you know better, you do better. Join me as we explore topics that might challenge what you know to be true when it comes to health, birth, and beyond. Let me help you think outside the box and empower you with steps to do better. Your best life could be on the other side of this next podcast. So join me now. Today we have a topic and a special guest that is kind of in the uh, beyond category part of this podcast. As you probably know, we cover the realms and the topics of health and birth and beyond. And so what's exciting today is I have Heather Rose on. She claims herself and calls herself a holistic realtor. And she is actually uh, from Nashville, Tennessee area. And I'm so excited to have her on. Heather, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Autumn. So she is going to be diving into some really interesting topics, especially just based off of her name. You can tell that she's got some good stuff to say. So this is something that you're going to want to listen into, especially if you are buying a house. But even if you're wanting to sell Or, I mean, who knows, maybe even some of us will learn some things about our homes, you know, or just take some notes for the future. So definitely get ready to save this because this is going to be a great subject and one that you're probably not going to hear of often. So Heather, um, let's, let's hear a little bit about your story because, you know, this name holistic realtor, you have really capitalized on. I'd love to learn for myself and for the listeners, like how and why did you start to, well, did you come to this place? And then how did you start to educate your clients um, on things about mold and other concerning health aspects of a home? Yeah, well, so I have been in real estate for 10 years. Prior to that, I was in marketing and corporate branding. And so that's kind of where the the holistic realtor um, notion came from, you know, just kind of a way to just collectively hold all of that, all, you know, health related things, lifestyle related. Um, but yeah, so like I said, 10 years in, in real estate and, um, for a couple of years ago, um, I was affected personally, um, by a new construction home. Mm-hmm. Um, I had mold toxicity, um, you know, I had a lot of the behind the scenes type. Um, a lot of people just, you know, get really affected and they're bedridden and they can't function, that sort of thing. But um, I was sort of a highly functioning (laughs) mold toxic person. Mm. Um, And, you know, we stumbled upon an issue in our home several years after we had purchased it actually. And, you know, had gone through the inspection process of that sort of thing. And just some things um, that's why I recommend, you know, pre drywall inspections. And we'll get into that a little later along the way when you're building Um, but you know, a lot of the things that, that can go wrong with the house, once the house is completed, you know, you can only see so much. So, you know, we were unaware of the issue and, um, that actually happened to me twice, um, believe it or not. And really, (laughs) yeah, you would think that it would just be an isolated, um, so after encountering all of that and going through, um, all of that, um, you know, just, there were some, um, you know, it was, is a very trying, um, situation, legal, uh, items and things that I just can't get into, but, uh, yeah, so we, uh, came out, uh, on the other end and I just thought, you know, this is the perfect, um, 
a topic to start uh, educating my buyers about and making mm. people aware that this is a thing. Um, you know, we have different building practices now, um, different technologies happening uh, from what you used to see. And, you know, all these different things are playing a part in how homes function or don't function well and can cause issues. And so, um, you know, I've always had kind of that, uh, you know, years ago when I got pregnant, just started paying attention to more health and, you know, raising children, things like that. Um, but it's really just all come together um, now since I've been in real estate and actually had experienced these, these um, travesties myself because, you know, nobody really thinks about air quality right. um, and how that plays into your overall, um, you know, health. So that's right. just, yeah, that's kind of how I ended up where I am today and um, just have, you know, kind of made a brand out of it and just am able to really, you know, again, create that awareness and kind of be the source of the source mm -hmm. um, and what people can do, what they can look for when they're buying a home, how we can make the process, um, you know, just more efficient, more in depth and capture more information because my whole philosophy is the more you know, um, the better decisions that you can make. And so it's just, you know, it's gra gathering that information and to make an informed decision. Mm, absolutely. Um, I appreciate that you, you know, took your circumstances and um, hopefully you healed yourself. Did you? Um, that still goal? in the process. Mm. Still in the process. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate that you've taken that, um, that hardship, that um, circumstance and you've, you know, used it to essentially educate and help others know better, you know, so that they can sure. be better. Mm -hmm. um, not everyone does that. And so right. I think that's wonderful that that's yeah. what we all need to be doing is taking our circumstances, whatever they are right. and using them to empower and teach others. Yeah. Well, um, God, I think God really placed that on my heart because Amen. You know, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> we have to do something positive with this. For sure. You mentioned that the home, this was all after the home had been in inspected. So you're essentially saying that home inspection really doesn't cover these types of categories, would you say? Well, there are limitations to home inspections. Um, you know, if if you wanted to inspect every single nook and cranny of your home after it was constructed, you'd be ripping out walls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you'd be ripping out showers, taking window, you know, I we I've seen the full gamut of issues that can happen. And so they, there are limitations, but, you know, a lot of issues can be found. Um, and especially with the systems and processes that um, I help my buyers through, um, you know, a lot of issues are declared a little bit later too with new construction, you know, maybe not right at the start, but as a home um, is lived in and you start using, um, the mechanicals and things like that. Sometimes, you know, there is a period before things show up, but mm. again, you know, the power control that we have is when you build new construction, but you can watch the process along the way, monitor it along the way, and then have the right professionals come in and do the right inspections. And so that is a little bit more protection on the front end. Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely they do have their limitations. And so you're not going to find, everything on an existing home, um, it would just be inaccurate to say that you could go in and, you know, just be able to isolate everything, mm -hmm. but you can, right. you know, find a lot. Well, you definitely seem like my type of realtor because <laughs> I want a realtor that, <clears throat> excuse me, you definitely seem like my type of realtor because I want a realtor that is going to actually be able to look out for my health, which is something I never, I'm sure many people listening have never thought of when purchasing a home. So that's amazing. But what, how would you say you're different from other realtors? I mean, outside of the obvious, like what are some of those extra things that someone will, you know, experience or get with, with who you are as a person and as a realtor compared to the average person out there? Sure. Well, I think a lot of what makes me, me unique as a realtor is, you know, my personal experiences with this. And so I, I feel like, you know, unless you have walked through certain scenarios, um, you know, you don't have 
you know, you can understand and you can, you know, there's a lot of realtors out there that do understand that are very holistically minded, but they just don't know what to do with the information. They don't know how to put a game plan together to actually help the buyer out. So I feel like, you know, my own personal experiences um, have enabled me to put together systems and processes to then, um, you know, educate and advocate for the client along the way. I work with a lot of people that, you know, they, it's, it's one of two categories. Usually it's like, Hey, I've been affected by, um, you know, I had a moldy home that tried to kill me (laughs) and, you know, I need help going forward. This is really important to me. I've experienced all sorts of health issues. And then you have another bucket that is like, wow, I, I had no clue that this could happen. Um, you know, I tell me more. Um, and a lot of people from different parts of the country that are moving here, they don't have the best understanding of our climate here. Um, humidity, you know, people out in California, they're like, what is humidity? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people in other, you know, what's a crawl space? How does that, you know, I just thought it was just this weird dark dungeon underneath my house and, <laughs> you know, or the attic. And so they don't really have a good understanding of how all of these areas of your home Uh, function together and can make or break that. So again, a huge part of of what I offer is that education and awareness. And then the second, um, you know, besides the systems and processes, um, the the second component is what do we do with that? Um, You know, who do we call in to assess these certain things? And, And so that is part of that is just having my trusted contacts come in and Mm, sort of facilitating that and bringing it all together because, you know, you have six or seven, maybe eight different reports and it's like, okay, now what are we going to do with this and what is priority and what can we ask for and what's more important? Um, What, what is in terms of walking away? um, How do we utilize this information to, to go forward? Because, you know, somebody might be looking for, a total gut and, um, you know, they're okay with certain aspects with, with, um, you know, having to repair some things because Mm -hmm. they're planning on tearing it all out. And then that gives them the knowledge of, okay, this bathroom, um, is affected. So there are precautions that we need to take when we do demo work. Mm -hmm. Um, and other people, you know, you'll see a house that's been fully remodeled and, you know, people aren't that you're paying top dollar for that. So, you know, you're not going to be prepared to go in and start ripping out walls to correct a, an issue that was left. Mm. Um, I call it lipstick on a pig. Um, (laughs) you know, it's like all this cosmetic work is done and then, um, you know, you, the, the problems are, are sight unseen. Right. So it just, you know, that, that's a process that we have to work through. Um, but I don't really know that, there are a lot of other realtors that can, you know, really knowledgeable, knowledgeably help uh, clients through that process. Hmm. Well, let's dive into some of these things. Um, let's talk about the things that people should know mm-hmm. when buying a home. Some of these things that you're speaking of, like what should we be looking for? And maybe if you're someone looking to sell, Maybe uh, you should have your ears tuned into this as well, uh, because you never know when you're ready to sell or heck, I'm, I'm not buying or selling right now, but I'm going to be <laughs> listening closely just to learn. So, Sure. Well, I think sellers, we'll start with that. You know, there's a lot of things that they can focus on to get their home ready for the market. There's a lot of maintenance. You know, if you go and you look in your, um, open your HVAC up and your, your, your filter cabinet and your filters just filthy, disgusting, and you haven't changed it in eight months, it's probably a good time to start doing that. Okay. How you often a- should we change that? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get if, that. If you're in a new right. construction area, you know, you're more prone to construction dust and, and, uh, and that sort of thing. So I tell people at a minimum to change it a month, a month on a monthly basis, you know, okay. buy the cheapo filters and keep that change so that it's not bogging down your system and creating, you know, build up on your coils. Um, the most important thing with an HVAC system is, uh, you know, you have to keep your coils and your inner components clean and there's a lot of complexities to that, but the whole thought process is that mold grows on dirt and dust. And so when you have all this buildup and your, you know, your inner components of your HVAC system, then it's just making way for things just to start growing. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, it starts with filtration. That's the number one thing you can do is keep, 
um, your house well ventilated, open windows, use fans, move that air around and usher it to um, your return so that it's getting cycled through. So that's one thing, um, you know, buyers don't want to go into a house and see like gross ductwork. Like, you know, that that's one thing that we do is we pick up the register off the floor and we look in there and it's like, if there's a lot of buildup, mm-hmm. um, you know, people just don't, it just gives off the vibe that the house has not been maintained or taken care of. So sellers can do that. Sellers can do a, um, a pre drywall or sorry, not a pre drywall. Um, sellers can do a, a pre home inspection and even offer, you know, get those items rectified, whatever comes up, and then offer that to the buyer to say, hey, we have already started this process. We really care. We want to pass off, you know, a home of good quality that's been taken care of. And so some of my sellers will do that. So that's very helpful to a buyer and just gives them sort of peace of mind and just a good feeling um, Mm, going into it. And it doesn't mean they can't get their own inspection. It's not to, you know, replace that, but Again, it's just a good avenue for, for them uh, to start. Um, in terms of buyers, when, you know, when we enter a house, um, you know, there's several things going on. People are usually looking at each room, trying to get, you know, decide whether their furniture will fit, um, you know, what color they're going to paint, all the things, right? And, you know, I just, <laughs> I'm over here looking up, down, left, right. <laughs> you know, not a lot of people want to look up, um, that's just not their first, uh, inclination to do that. Um, but you, you know, you want to pay special attention to, um, areas like baseboards, ceilings, which are right below the roof line. Um, you know, we're looking for areas of water intrusion, water penetration, Mm -hmm. um, you know, which can indicate roof failure. Um, we're looking under cabinets, uh, for signs of leaks, prior leaks, just trying to glean as much information and a lot of other agents, you know, they just say, well, let's just leave this to the inspector, right? Well, that is, um, an inspector's job, but if I take a buyer into a home and we're seeing a lot of signs of water intrusion or, you know, growth on the vents, or, I mean, it just might not be the right home for that buyer and they may not want to invest all that money into inspections because when you do it right, it does add up and it does become expensive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people just have to be comfortable enough with the home to go, um, to embark on that, right. To spend all of that money. And, you know, if we start getting clues that, you know, it's not just isolated in this one area, people ask me all the time, like, can I find a mold free home? And I'm like, there's no such thing as a mold free home. Um, we live in, in in particularly, particularly in this area in the South, there's humidity. We've got crawl spaces that haven't been managed or maintained. Um, you know, humidity issues, there's likely to be something somewhere. Um, Mm -hmm. our goal is to find that and see how isolated or contained it is or isn't. Mm -hmm. And then make a decision and say, hey, you know, this is easily repairable. Um, It's not a deal breaker um, versus, you know, something that has 10 different areas that, you know, it's just way far beyond the scope of Mm -hmm. what somebody wants to deal with. Um, So those are things that we're looking for. We're also circling the outside of the home. We're looking at drainage. We want to make sure that water is draining away from the foundation. Mm. That can cause crawl space issues a lot of the times. We're looking at, um, you know, I will go in the attic personally. A lot of times the air handlers up there, I have seen air handlers with water sitting in the pan before. Um, I've seen rust all over it. I've seen, you know, ductwork that is just fully fledged, full of on the outside, just mold growth um, or what I would perceive to be mold growth. You'd actually have to have it tested to know for sure. Um But, you know, there are things that we're looking for just to get a general understanding about that home. And one thing that that I do differently um, is I research the house before taking someone there. So, you know, previous property condition disclosures that are posted, Mm -hmm. you can see, um, you know, the history of the home and then asking lots of questions. You can also get, you know, pretty valuable information um, going into the home so that you know what to look for. Mm, that's so helpful. Such great input there. 
um, so many things, like you said, that I probably wouldn't have ever thought about. You know, when you walk through a home, you're so concerned and curious about the aesthetics and it's emotional you know it's emotional it's like do I can I envision my family being here do I like the neighbor there are so many different things going through that buyer's mind that they kind of need a (laughs) a neutral you know right to say hey we have to think about you know how this is going to impact your health as well what could be lurking behind these walls that's going to cut your life short sure (laughs) that's a bigger (laughs) issue right there huh more than any emotions or uh, (laughs) fancy uh upgraded kitchens and whatnot right um so some of these things you mentioned i mean we could probably kind of go do our own inspection of our current homes right now, right? I mean, just kind of look around, go back through what you just said, and Mm -hmm. maybe kind of evaluate how we're looking in the home that we're in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, you know, I am kind of getting into the process of, in the space of um, helping people with that, Um, you know, some consulting with, hey, I have an existing home. What can I do to make sure that Um, my home is healthy, um, or I'm getting ready to do a remodel, what are some things that I need to think through before we just go ripping out walls? Um, And then, you know, it's up to you to, um, you know, call in that, those specialists in your respective area. But um, yeah, just to kind of have a foundation and a, a, a game plan and that framework to, to have a place to start, because, you know, there's a lot of maintenance involved in, all these different parts of your home and, you know, HVAC and roof and attic and crawl space. And if, you know, if you have never been in these areas or you're too afraid to go, you need to call somebody in that (laughs) will do the job. Right. Um, I know I go in my crawl space like once a month at Mm. least, and I have a little bit of a taller crawl space. So it's easier. I'm not like crawling on my belly to get in and out, but you know, I want to see, what is going on. And it's a lot easier to, uh, you know, circumvent those problems when you get on at the front end instead Mm. of letting it go for months and then, or years, and then you have a bigger problem on your hands. All right. Well, you've taught me something there. (laughs) Um, I'm so I want to ask, I'm completely ignorant of this subject, but outside of mold toxins, Mm -hmm. What other toxins can be lurking in the home or is it mostly just mold? Well, so it can be mold. It can be mycotoxins, which are a byproduct of mold. So mycotoxins are more um, akin to a, like a gas. Mm. Um, and so, you know, when you do, the system that I help my clients with, when you do testing, a lot of times people are testing for mold, but if they're super sensitive they may also want to test for mycotoxins um, because a lot of times mold, if it is left alone, it doesn't necessarily, it's not putting up its defenses. So if you start um, opening up walls or, you know, you start irritating that mold somehow and and stirring it up for lack of better terms, um, it will start to, you know, enact those, enable those defenses. And then those are mycotoxins uh, coming into play. Um, Also, you see that if two, if there's a mold that is um, uh, in the presence of another mold, um, it'll give off mycotoxins to defend itself. Mm. And so a lot of times um, that's what makes people sick. So it may not always be giving off mycotoxins. um, And there's certain molds that give off certain mycotoxins and then some molds that don't. Um, you know, and that's kind of where the help of an environmental consultant comes in and can help people wade through that. But it's just definitely something um, that's fairly easy to test for. So if that's something that's important to that particular buyer or person that, um, you know, that is living in a home that they just want to know. Um, bacteria is a big one, too, because where there's water, there's usually bacteria Um, So bacteria can cause a whole host of other issues um, in addition to the mold. Hmm. Um, And a lot of people that are going through treatment, functional health, they have to deal with these bacteria as well. Um, Asbestos in older homes, um, lead in other homes or older homes. Um, We also have radon, which is very prevalent in Tennessee. 
because we have a lot of a lot of rock and we see that more common too in encapsulated crawl spaces so it's closed in and it's not um, able to have the you know airflow and it's not circulating getting those gases out when it's encapsulated so radon is a really important and you can test for that anytime um, there's a 48 hour test there's even longer tests that you can do you can do like a seven day test to get a really good average um, mm-hmm. to know that you know or to know if you are being exposed to radon so yeah there's more than just mold mm-hmm. um, and then you know again just whatever is most important to that buyer. And of course, these things are not just for the South. Like a lot of what you're talking Mm -hmm. about is just all houses nationwide, despite the climate. Yeah. Well, um, you do have certain factors um, that kind of take priority in different climates. Um, You know, building construction, those are going to be different. Um, You know, house up North that where it gets into freezing temps all the time, they're going to be constructed differently Mm. than a home in the South. Um, But the concepts really apply. I mean, if you have a water leak, you have a water leak, (laughs) you know, um, we just have more humidity here in the South and it just tends to cause more issues. And then when you go to fix those issues, then you have to think about the, the domino effect and what do we need to put into place? You know, do we need to make up air system because now we've encapsulated our crawl space or we conditioned our attic um, or our roof. And, and so, you know, where are you going to get those air exchanges um, that you normally would have when everything is ventilated and breathing? Mm -hmm. And honestly, that's how homes should be built with proper ventilation, but it doesn't always happen. Um, Sometimes that starts with an architect. Other times it's just, you know, builders going and, you know, trying to utilize the latest technology and, um, materials, and then they're not functioning properly and making people sick. So what about the mold in showers? Is that concerning? Or the little black, you know, areas that maybe you might bleach and then it comes back. (laughs) That's probably a common one that everyone can relate to to some degree. (laughs) Typically that's due to humidity issues. You know, I mean, if, if you're not, if, and you know, if your fan in your bathroom doesn't have enough CFMs and it's not powerful enough to draw that humidity up and out and it's not venting to an exterior, sometimes these older homes, you've got humidity or you've got fans that are venting into the attic, literally. So oh, it's wow. like taking that That's humidity concerning. and dispersing it. It's very concerning. Um, mm. So then you have a whole other problem than just your bathroom. But a lot of times it is a humidity buildup issue, like smaller spaces. So you have to do what you can to improve the ventilation in the bathroom in that area. And then, you know, regular cleanings. Um, You know, I don't really recommend using bleach to clean mold, but, you know, on tile surfaces, Mm -hmm. it's usually okay because the tile's not porous, you know, so it's not Um, Like, you know, using bleach to clean wood to where it's just going to penetrate that wood and cause more issues. Mm. Um, But yeah, typically you want to look for the root and the root is not the little speckles on the, on the tile. It's because you have a, you know, an ongoing humidity issue in that space. That's really good. Yeah. How can we prevent this? Uh, Well, you kind of just, I mean, you started to dive into that, but the rest of the house issues, um, is there anything more that you can add to kind of what information we've been accruing along this interview um, as to things we can do to prevent? Obviously you said change filters often, Mm -hmm. anything else we should know? Sure. I think just, you know, pinning a maintenance plan and sticking by that, put it in your calendar, write it down, post it somewhere where you can remember regular HVAC cleaning, coil cleanings, um, you know, depending upon your system, there are different HVAC systems, they have different needs. Um, But yeah, that just the maintenance is, is huge because, you know, a lot of homes even today that are brand new construction that, you know, you have a custom home where you do certain things and you're working with the builder, you're paying for all these upgrades, custom upgrades along the way um, to help preserve and maintain, but even for a new construction home to where, you know, you have more of a production builder, there are things that I recommend people do that are kind of above and beyond Mm -hmm. that they can do after closing Mm -hmm. to maintain. Um, And that's, you know, installing extra filtration, 
um, again, like we talked about with the filters, um, installing UV light bulbs on the coils to keep them clean, to keep that buildup, that growth from happening. A lot of people get sucked into, you know, there's a lot of systems, there's a lot of gimmicks out there that claim to, um, these ionizers and, you know, they claim to kill mold in your HVAC system. Like, you want to remove that. You want to make sure it's not even there in the first place. And so a lot of these systems, they don't have the proper dwell time. So, you know, when you put an item out in the sun and you let it sit for hours and hours and hours and it can be sanitized in that fashion, if you don't have the right amount of dwell time and you've got a light and you've got these particles that are just rushing through, then it's kind of a to me, a false sense of security. Mm -hmm. So dealing with the root of the problem, if that is, you know, uh, coils that need to be maintenanced or cleaned effectively, and then put a blue light on those just to make sure, or UV light to make sure that that is maintained. Um, That might be something that, um, you know, you might need particularly for your house. Um, Duct cleaning is important. Um, I would say like regular roof inspections, having a roofer out, once a year, um, having an inspector out even once or twice a year, if it, it, if the budget allows, you know, because they're going to walk that house, they're going to go in the again the crawl space, the attic, these areas of your home need to be um, mm-hmm. investigated more than once every five years. Right. <laughs> you know, it's ideally on a people. right, <laughs> ideally on a yearly basis. I know people that have never stepped foot in in those areas. And again, if you don't want to do it, call a hire somebody that will come in and do that. So there are a lot of things that you can do. Gutters are big. People mm-hmm. let their gutters back up. And then they're what it what's they're gonna back up into the roof. They're the the water's not going to drain properly and it's going to come back into the house. Mm. Um, so keeping gutters cleaned or adding gutter guards, making sure foundation is, or your, your uh, downspouts are draining away from your foundation. Um, these are all little things that you can do, um, you know, just to maintain and, and preserve your home. So yeah, again, just regular inspections, um, beyond the closing, even with new construction, um, cause you do have that one year warranty. I always, um, advocate for people to have their inspector back at the 11 month mark mm. and do another inspection, pay the couple of hundred bucks. Um, and then you're able to kind of collectively turn in that list to the builder of whatever, you know, back to my whole, when you buy new construction, it may take a while for issues to present once you're in the home and you start using these systems the mechanicals and things like that. So that's also a good time to um, investigate any issues you know, in that 11th month that you can take, bring to the builder's attention. Wow. This has been so great, Heather. Like these are things that that just, you just don't get to hear about often at all (laughs) or, you know, nobody talks about it. Right. I remember when you and I met in Tennessee and I was looking at your Instagram and learning more about you. And I mean, I just found it interesting. We didn't even dive into all of this, but you were just talking about how, when you go to build a home, you know, you're there quite often, you know, keeping tabs on the site and, you know, looking at what the building crew is doing and you can actually start to catch things that could be problematic or maybe might become problematic because maybe it's been raining a lot or, you know, the weather is not quite um, what we want it to be in, in when building, you know, from scratch. And so that, that was just mind blowing at the time, but now this is just a whole new ball game and so valuable. And I have a whole new, um, hubby to-do list uh, (laughs) for us to keep our home good and and up to par and also for our health as well. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. And a lot of people, it's very easy to get overwhelmed. Um, But again, that is where I try to make it easy for people with systems and processes in place. And you know, I even help people build lists after new construction um, to put together and say, hey, or just, you know, moving into a home in general. Um, if there are some repairs that have come from inspections, um, you know, what, how to prioritize those. We usually try to go for money in lieu of repairs from a seller just because then you have more control mm. over those repairs yeah. and who's going to do that. And then you have a whole list and it's like, okay, well, how, how do these 
you know, how can these function together? What has to be done first? What needs to be done last? Or what can afford to wait longer than something else? So just helping people, again, build that plan um, to make it easier for them because it is very overwhelming when you don't understand um, or have a general, I have a, you know, more more of an in-depth than most understanding of how building science works to make a home function properly. And then, you know, couple that with the other professionals that are going to come in that have a true understanding of that process. But the average buyer, the average homeowner, they, they don't. So, you know, yeah. that's definitely a place that we can help to make that easier for people that are just completely overwhelmed with it. We need to duplicate you because you're a wealth of I knowledge. I hear that every day. <laughs> and more people need Heather's walking around helping them purchase and pick out houses. <laughs> so Heather, uh, what are your top three tips for someone's health when buying their new home? What three well, tips would you give? I would say to test, test, test. Um, because, you know, you can enter the home and you can see XYZ or smell XYZ or Can you buy a like home. a mold testing kit and like if you really like a home like demand that you put the kit in there for so many days and see if there's mold like what does that look like well so there's different avenues to testing um depending on what your goals are you know you can do an army um which is an environmental relative moldiness index test you can google it and read about it um that test is great because it's a dna sample of mold so it will catch what is you know actively growing and then whatever is dormant because again when a mold is dormant those fragments are breaking off into the air so you can purchase that test and do that mm -hmm. actually yourself it's a swiffer even if you don't purchase the test in time you can go to the store and buy a swiffer um, and use that and then just go on and create a, a chain of command a, a chain of custody form um, whatever that's called and send it in with the Swiffer um, and then just pay for expedited results. That's going to give you the most historical snapshot of a home. Wow. Um, you know, there, there are pros and cons to every test. Some people go in and they spend gobs of money on air testing. And a lot of times that fails people. I it, It's happened to me. I can speak to that personally. Mm -hmm. Um Air testing is valuable in certain situations, but, you know, you want something that's going to capture the whole picture. Um, some of these tests won't tell you where the problem is. That is, you know, obviously a, a con of one of the one of the cons of the ERMI test. Um, it's just going to give you that historical snapshot. It's not going to say, hey, um, you have mold growing in your laundry room or um, your upstairs bathroom, you know. So it's going to be up to you to have uh, that home inspected. Again, that's gold standard. It's a visual inspection. And then testing usually come, stems from whatever is found. It's like a body, you know, in functional medicine. You're looking at all these different parts. And, right. you know, the physician or doctor, nurse practitioners will look at you and say, well, these are your symptoms. These are what we can see uh, or notice. And then here are the tests that we need to do to again, objectively determine what's going on because everything is just subjective up to that point. Um, so, you know, I would say someone has to get past that point enough to like the house and make an offer on the house and be willing to invest those dollars in inspections. So if you walk in and it seems fine and, you know, you don't have any, uh, you know, glaring issues. Um, you don't see water on the walls or you don't s have these overwhelming odors coming at you or you, you know, then it's probably at that point you can move along and say, Hey, I'm comfortable with making an offer on this property and I'm comfortable with investing these dollars versus, you know, this is just a, based on what I'm seeing right now, this is a no. <laughs> right. So that's kind of how, you know, we need to approach that. But yeah, back to the testing. I mean, there are tons of different tests. Um, air, air sampling is really good for wall cavities. I've seen, and I know a lot of the professionals, you know, will um, isolate, be able to isolate issues that way. Um, there are swabs, there are tape samples, and they're all utilized for different things. Um, okay. So you can test um, your internal components of your HVAC 
Um, mm-hmm. You know, I always recommend testing that separately. It just really depends on budget and what the client's goals are. And then we just discuss that with um, the environmental consultant and build that plan that works for them. Mm, that's super helpful. I took you away from your three tips. Let's go oh, back I'm to this. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine because that's good. I actually wanted to dive into that a little bit more with with testing. Right. So yeah, so test and remediate. Um, again, maintenance, which we've talked about already, different things you can do. Maintenance is extremely important. And I would say um, just looking at everything holistically is just you know, it's really easy to get just like sucked into all of this. The more you know, the more sucked in you get. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it can kind of create this sort of stress response and fear response. And for a lot of people, that's, you know, you've got this just overwhelming, like, what do I do? I can't move right now. I can't, you know, where where do you go? Like everything's so much more expensive, you know, whatever, whatever the reasoning is. And so I think just, again, it goes back to, you know, taking a deep breath and sort of creating space between anything that you might encounter or find in all of this testing, and then have somebody help you put together a plan to work through it so that it's not so overwhelming because it can cause um, what, you know, it's like you're doing, you're going through these uh, the motions to to improve your health, but then you're creating stress mm-hmm. around that because you don't have a plan or you right. think that, you know, now you have this information that you didn't have yesterday and you're going to die tomorrow because, <laughs> you know, you're like, what do I do with this right now? And so I think just, again, having, you know, if you're going to jump into that and do all this testing, be prepared for things to come back and then have some space between that and create a plan or hire or call someone, hire someone to help you create a plan because I think it can just be just stress provoking. Mm-hmm. I agree. So with I that. would say those are probably the top three and something, you know, I see it every day. I'm in a lot of groups and I myself was one of those. Um, you know, you get all this information and you're like, what am I supposed to do with this? And then you're calling people out that are giving you like four different, you know, ways of it or one person saying don't do this and another person saying don't do that you need to do this it's just it's a lot to work through Mm -hmm. Um, and some people are right and some people unfortunately are not Mm -hmm. so Hmm. yeah but I do agree with you that you know knowledge is power but it's not Mm -hmm. meant to (laughs) stress ourselves out where then we're working against ourselves right so Um, Heather, I feel like you need your own TV show, the holistic (laughs) realtor, and you can just get on and educate us all throughout the nation about what to look for. And the cameras can follow you into houses. And like, I know people would sign up to have you be their realtor and be on TV. So somebody out there listening, (laughs) Heather needs a TV show. (laughs) Uh, Heather, where can people find you? Where can they follow along, learn more? Uh, hire you if they're in Nashville area. <laughs> yeah. So you can find a wealth of information on the holistic realtor TN. Um, and that's the underscore holistic underscore realtor underscore TN. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> um, but I have a wealth of, of information and in my stories there on Instagram. Um, you know, it's all free. It's easy to follow along. Um, it's easy to devise a plan or know what to look for with, with that information. And then also you can email me at the holistic realtor TN at gmail.com. Um, and then I also have a website, the holistic realtor TN.com. Mm. Fabulous. Heather, this has been phenomenal. This is, um, something that has ignited something in me now. I realize there's an area that I've been neglecting in my life and that's my own home. So like I said, we're going to go get busy and get to work and get expecting and, or, uh, expecting, no, uh, inspecting and (laughs) we're going to get inspecting and, you know, just be more aware of these things. So I appreciate you so much for coming on, for sharing all your wisdom. And I just know so many people are going to take 
today's interview um, and, you know, either tuck it away for the future Mm -hmm. when they do uh, go to purchase or, you know, maybe some are in the midst of it right now and they need to be mindful of this. So thank you. Thank you again. You are so welcome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We'll see y'all next time on the Know Better, Do Better podcast. Until then, take care. Bye for now.